Will you stand with those that will defend your freedoms? Will you stand with Deborah Medina tonight? You see, ladies and gentlemen, patriots, the governor of this state thinks that this piece of paper is a tool in his hand. The new governor of Texas, Deborah Medina, realizes that she is a tool in this Constitution's hand, and she will uphold it. Well, Texas, it's, uh, it's time for the woman that we all came to see tonight. I want to share with you uh, something before she comes up. For those of you that I didn't tell earlier, I may have right when we got here a little bit earlier. Uh, my name is Jeff Bolton. I'm a talk show host now in Dallas. I was here at WOAI uh, on an afternoon drive. Can't even remember. You know, can't remember what I ate for breakfast anymore. It seems like it was 03, 04, and 05 or some portion of those years. And I, uh, I've since gone on and, and gotten back to my family in Dallas. And I'm now I do morning drive at, uh, at KLIF up in Dallas. Thank you. And I got a call last week uh, from a friend through another friend and said, would you come back down to San Antonio and, and MC an event for Deborah Medina? And that call came in the aftermath of what you all now know to have been uh, an absolutely extraordinary attack upon her by a, a national media figure from a high atop New York City. I don't know about all of you, but to use an old Texas expression, I don't cotton too well to people from New York City telling me about Texas politics. It has been said by Andrew Jackson uh, that one man with courage makes a majority. We will tonight instead modify that for what we know to be the truth. It is tonight one woman with courage who makes a majority. Give a big welcome. would do it. This is Texas. It's not New York City. Where's that New York City? Yeah, you know, this is Texas and we have been fighting for freedom for years, for generations. And we wish somebody would get in because we knew that neither Kay Hutchison or Rick Perry taking care of us anymore. It's very clear. They have left our border wide open. They have both worked for bailouts. They are both going to shove the Trans-Texas quarter down our throats. Don't you think for a second that is not dead. There was testimony in the House last week by a Tex.Dot employee that they are still pursuing that quarter. It is not dead. You want to drive a stake in the heart of the quarter, you better work hard from now until March 2nd and nominate yourself a new governor. We got into this race when nobody thought we had a snowball's chance to win. The very first event that I spoke at, I said, this is the commitment I'm going to make to you. I'm going to work my butt off for the next year. I'm going to do three full-time jobs. I'm going to continue to run a small business. I'm going to run a full-time statewide campaign. And I'm going to prepare to govern the state of Texas. I said that night, and I've said every event I've spoke at since then, the outcome of this race isn't going to have anything to do with me. I get one vote. 
It's going to be up to you. How hard are you going to work? And this crowd tonight and crowds like it all over Texas are evidence that you saw what freedom could look like for our state. You saw what sovereignty could look like for our state. And you said, I had enough and I'm not taking it anymore. We're going to win this race. that talks about how powerful fear and how powerful the seed of doubt is if you let it take hold. You look at what has happened in this campaign and you look at how many have tried to plant the fear of seed and doubt in Texas politics. That Deborah Medina isn't going to go anywhere. She's never even going to register in the polls. And then when we registered in the polls, they said, oh, well, she's, she's never going to get out of the single digits. And then when we got out of the single digits, they said, oh, well, now she's going to just cause a runoff and cost us a bunch of money. Why don't y'all just get her to sit down and shut up? See, once upon a time, we had founders who believed that citizens would go serve in elected office and they would come home and live under the laws that they passed. Today, all over the United States of America, I think our founders are turning in their graves because we have created the very political royal class that they fought to get away from. They gave us the U.S. Constitution, the best blueprint ever laid for a free and prosperous society. And we have ignored it and ignored it. And so now the national media is coming not at me, but at us. That battle is at us because you are turning out in record numbers to vote and they know this isn't about a runoff anymore. talking about for the last 13 months. You keep standing shoulder to shoulder. You keep digging in. You make sure you go vote. You've got five days of early voting left. You go down to the courthouse tomorrow and you look at the list of people who have already voted and if your family members and your friends and your co-workers names are not on that list, you better get on the phone. Better yet, you better show up at their door at 7.30 on Tuesday morning and put them in the car and take them to the poll. You get them to vote. You keep turning out the vote in this race, and there's not going to be a runoff. They'll be right about that. We're that close. We're that close. But it's elbow grease and shoe leather that's winning this race. We brought in, y'all have contributed a, tr a, a tremendous amount of money in the last month. We're at $750,000 today. That's buying us radio time and it's buying some TV time, but it's not going to compete. Don't expect to see the same amount of commercials. You let Rick Perry keep doing us a favor of telling all of Texas why Kate Bailey's the wrong choice. And you let Kay keep spending her money telling us why Rick's the wrong choice. And you tell them they're both right. They're both right. We're going to use that to our advantage. We're going to win this race because you're working hard, but you got five days of early voting left. You got an election day. Do not let up until 7.01 p.m. on March 2nd. If you've already voted every minute, every hour that you can spend at a polling place, even at the early voting places, stay 100 feet from the door, thank the people for coming to vote, ask them to vote for Medina for governor.